Australians could be forgiven for wondering whether it's really spring. Take a look at this. This was Falls Creek, Victoria, yesterday, looking more like the start of the snow season. Just out of Melbourne, conditions were much the same, with temperatures plunging to zero degrees. But in contrast, this is the Blue Mountains in New South Wales, where hot winds were fueling bushfires. While in South East Queensland, a lunchtime storm of heavy rain and hail caused damage to homes and left thousands without power. Joining us now is meteorologist Matthew Pearce from the Weather Zone. Matthew, we want to know what on earth is going on with all of this weather. Well, it certainly is pretty extreme weather, as we've seen temperatures uh, down to freezing through Victoria, snow down to about three or four hundred metres. These are all conditions that we would normally expect in June or July, but to have them at this stage of the year in November is certainly a pretty extreme event and probably one that we haven't seen in about 15 or 20 years. You say it's an extreme event. A lot of people are talking about a possible link with climate change, with global warming. Is that playing a role? Well, you've got to be careful uh, to distinguish between climate change and one-off weather events. Climate change by its nature is talking about the change in weather over a long period of time. So climate change may manifest itself by uh, more frequent extreme events, and this may be what we're starting to see now. It's still a bit uncertain at this stage. But we have to remember that we've seen all these type of events in the past. I mean, we only need to look back 12 years or so, the Sydney hailstorm, um, 20 years, Ash Wednesday bushfires, Cyclone Tracy in 1974. Extreme events have happened all through history. It's just now, I guess, climate change is this buzzword that everyone's just latching onto. And, yeah, it may be related, but it's still a bit early to tell. But, Matthew, we seem to be getting more of these extreme events. There's this awful drought that is gripping so much of the country. We've had hailstorms overnight in Queensland, snow yesterday in Melbourne. A summer is less than two weeks away. Yeah. It all seems fairly sort of it's, out there. It's certainly out there. Um, most of these particular events, the snow, the hailstorms, the bushfires, most of them connection to trace back to one particular weather system that's affecting southeastern Australia at the moment. A vigorous cold front moved through yesterday, uh, bringing in a, a burst of polar air from well south of the country. So that's to blame for this particular snow, hail and all those events. Uh, the drought, that can be tied back mainly to the El Nino pattern that we're sitting in at the moment and have been in for the last few months. So while all of these things may seem pretty extreme, most of them do have um, a reason behind them, um, a scientific basis. And as I say, they could be related to a long-term climate change, but it's a bit too early to tell. A lot of people are waking up this morning thinking, what am I going to wear? Do I need to pack a coat? Will I need to bring my cozies later? You know, what's happening? What, what is going to happen with this cold snap? Uh, well, New South Wales is now bearing the brunt of the cold, cold conditions. Sydney today is expecting a top of only 15 degrees. Now, if that comes off, that will be our coldest day, the coldest November day, that is, in about 20 years. Melbourne yesterday, which was top of only 13 degrees, that was their coldest November day since 1994. Uh, Melbourne today will be a little bit milder. They can expect to top around 16 or 17. Uh, but, however, most of South East Australia uh, will see the end of this cold snap by the weekend and we'll be back to much warmer conditions by early next week. So can you say then the sun... The sun's radiation comes in in the form of light waves and that heats up the earth and then some of the radiation that is absorbed and warms the earth is re-radiated back into space in the form of infrared radiation. And some of the outgoing infrared radiation is trapped by this layer of atmosphere and held inside the atmosphere. And that's a good thing because it keeps the temperature of the Earth within certain boundaries, keeps it relatively constant and livable. But the problem is this thin layer of atmosphere is being thickened by all of the global warming pollution that's being put up there. And what that does is it thickens this layer of atmosphere, more of the outgoing infrared is trapped. And so the atmosphere heats up worldwide. That's global warming. Now that's the traditional explanation. Here's a, what I think is a better explanation. Global warming or none like it hot. <laughs> You're probably wondering why your ice cream went away. Well, Susie, the culprit isn't foreigners, it's global warming. Global warming? Yeah.
Meet Mr. Sunbeam. He comes all the way from the sun to visit Earth. Hello, Earth. Just popping in to brighten your day. La, 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 la. And now, I'll be on my way. Not so fast, Sunbeam. We're greenhouse gases. You ain't going nowhere. Oh! Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! Oh, God, it hurts! Pretty soon, Earth is chock full of sunbeams. They're rotting corpses heating our atmosphere. <laughs> How do we get rid of the greenhouse gases? Fortunately, our handsomest politicians came up with a cheap, last-minute way to combat global warming. Ever since 2063, we simply drop a giant ice cube into the ocean every now and then. Just like Daddy puts in his drink every morning. And then he gets mad. Of course, since the greenhouse gases are still building up, it takes more and more ice each time. Thus solving the problem once and for all. But once and for all! It's Mount Kilimanjaro more than 30 years ago and more recently. And a friend of mine just came back from Kilimanjaro with a picture he took a couple months ago. Another friend, Lonnie Thompson, studies glaciers. Here's Lonnie with a last sliver of one of the once mighty glaciers. Within the decade, there will be no more snows of Kilimanjaro. This is happening in Glacier National Park. I climbed to the top of this in 1998 with one of my daughters. Within 15 years, this will be the park formerly known as Glacier. Here is what's been happening year by year to the Columbia Glacier. It just retreats every single year. And it's a shame because these glaciers are so beautiful. But those who go up to see them, here's what they're seeing every day now. In the Himalayas, in fact, if you look at the 10 hottest years ever measured in this atmospheric record, they've all occurred in the last 14 years. And the hottest of all was 2005. We have already seen some of the heat waves that are similar to what scientists are saying are going to be a lot more common. A couple of years ago in Europe, they had that massive heat wave that killed 35,000 people. India didn't get as much attention, but the same year, the temperature there went to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. This past summer, here's Manhattan. This is the World Trade Center memorial site. And after the horrible events of 9-11, we said never again. But this is what would happen to Manhattan. They can measure this precisely, just as the scientists could predict precisely how much water would breach the levees in New Orleans. The area where the World Trade Center Memorial is to be located, when you put them all together, they've made us a force of nature. And this is also a political issue. This is a computer map of the world that distorts to show the relative contributions to global warming. In our country, we are responsible for more than all of the wrong way to balance the economy and the environment. One part of this issue involves automobiles. Japan has mileage standards up here. Europe plans to pass Japan. Our allies in Australia and Canada are leaving us behind. Here's where we are. Now there's a reason for it. They say that we can't protect the environment too much without threatening the economy and threatening the automakers because automakers in China might come in and just steal all our markets. Well, here is where China's auto mileage standards are now. Way above ours. We can't sell our cars in China today because we don't meet the Chinese environmental standards. <laughs> California. All of these nations have ratified Kyoto. There are only two advanced nations in the world that have not ratified Kyoto, and we are one of them. The other is Australia. 